In this lesson, we'll cover the new and improved Lumos layout system using completely native utilities. If you'd like to learn more about this recent update, check the link in the description below. There's two main types of grid utilities we can create. This first type allows us to manually set the number of columns we want for each breakpoint. I can make this a four column grid on desktop, three columns on tablet, and just adjust for each breakpoint. The second type, called Auto Fit, allows us to set the minimum width we want for our columns, 13 rim in this case, and before these columns get smaller than 13 rim, it'll just reduce the number of columns we have, making sure the columns themselves are never smaller. This version is automatically responsive straight from desktop, and if the user increases their font size, it'll also reduce the number of columns we have, so this version can be more accessible. But sometimes we do want to set the number of columns for each breakpoint manually, and we can create utilities specific for that too. So this is a starting point we can duplicate, and I can rename this instead of custom to be column three. If I have a three column grid, I'm going to use a lot throughout my site. And I might go ahead and duplicate this custom class, name it column three, and I can go ahead and set that to however I want it to respond. So maybe it's a three column on desktop, maybe on tablet, it switches to two. On the next breakpoint, it can stay two, and on the last one, it's one column. And I might also have a four column grid I'm reusing throughout my site, so I'll duplicate this, name this four, uh, go ahead and duplicate the class, and then adjust the responsiveness for that four column grid. So this can be a four column on desktop. On the next breakpoint, it can become three columns. On the next breakpoint, it can become two columns. And on the last breakpoint, it will be a single column. Now to apply these throughout my site, here I have a collection list of all my team leaders. So on that collection list, I can add a utility for my uh, four column grid. And I might wanna apply this to my all teams collection list as well, a utility of four columns. Now any changes I make here, like adjusting the vertical gap to maybe be my space medium, that's gonna affect every instance of team list with this four column utility throughout the site. So the leaders have that same gap. It's not adjusting the main four column utility only when it's stacked on top the team list. And we might have this on multiple pages throughout the site and later decide we wanna change all our team grids to be a three column grid instead. So this is following the four column one of adapting on each breakpoint like so, but we can just rename this to be three column. Now it says this class already exists. So to fix that, we can delete everything except the U dash and then add it back in. So I'll say grid column three. And when we do that, it now applies this to every instance of this team grid throughout the site. They've all become three columns and they're respecting the responsiveness we set up for that three column sort of structure here. We can also do something custom if we want. So let's go ahead and delete everything except U dash. And then let's add the grid custom in. And now we can define a custom grid specific to the team list. So we might decide that we do want this to be three columns on desktop, but for our team list, we want it to stay three columns on tablet. On the next breakpoint, we want it to switch to two, and then maybe it stays two from that point on. So these are just good starting points, but we can always build a custom sort of layout if we'd like um, specific for whatever we're doing. I can also add my U grid auto fit and this would just auto fit within each one. Let's go ahead and add that to both of these. And what we should notice is on larger screen sizes, like above our container max width here, it's trying to fit however many of these it can uh, while maintaining that 13 rem minimum width. So we have too many columns here. We might wanna make sure it always stays a four column grid. So what I can do is configure this and adjust this min width. Looks like at 16 rim, it's gonna be a five column grid, but if I give these a min of 17 rim, then they're a four column grid. So if I go ahead and preview this, this is now four columns on desktop, and without even switching to tablet, when these get smaller than 17 rim, it's gonna reduce it to be a three column grid. And then here, at some point, it's gonna switch it to be a two column grid, and without even crossing between breakpoints, it's just gonna switch that over when it needs to, and it's automatically responsive, which is great because if the user increases their font size, instead of running out of space for our text here, um, it's just gonna reduce the number of columns we have for that sort of layout. 
based on their font size. We can also adjust items within our grid. So if we select this item, we could style all of our first items within the list, and we could add a custom property. I'll pass in grid column, and this accepts two values. First, which column should the item start on? So we could say start on the second column or the first column, or maybe just auto, depending on the number of items that come before it. And the second value it accepts is how many columns this should span over. So I can say span two, and now this item spans over two of those columns. We can change this to span one and start on the second column, and now it just pushes it over by a column and it's spanning one. Instead of this span one, we could pass in a negative one, and this will just make it span over all of the remaining columns. So since there's two columns left, it's spanning over those two, but if we have this start on the first column, it will span over three. So it's just spanning all of the remaining like so. Let's change this back to start two and span uh, one. And now that we have this item here, we can apply the same thing for our rows. So we can apply a grid row setting, and here we can set it to maybe start in the auto row, but span over two of those rows. And there it's just spanning two. We could push this down if we had more rows to start on the second row or hard code it to the first or anything else we'd like. And these can be completely changed across breakpoints. So on this hero grid, let's add a utility of ugrid custom, and that way we can define our own column count. I'll set this to a 12 column grid, and that means this child here is taking up one of those 12 columns. So we could add a grid column sort of property onto this and set it to start on the second column and span over 10 columns like so. But we'll want this child to be a 10 column grid within the parent's 12 column grid. So we could add a U grid custom onto this and set it to be a 10 column grid if we'd like. But instead, there's something else we can do called subgrid. So if I just add a U grid sort of subgrid utility on, it's still set to a display of grid with our default gap on that grid and everything else. And just like any other child, we can still set it to start on the second column, span 10 columns. But the difference here is this the number of columns on this grid is going to be based on how many columns it's spanning. So right now it's a 10 column grid. If I set this to span two columns, it now becomes a two column grid and the button has to wrap underneath because the column count on this grid is based on over how many columns it's spanning over. So we can go ahead and set this title wrap here to have a U column full, and that way it just has one over negative one, it's spanning all the available columns. And on this button wrap, we can add the same U column full, so it's just spanning all available columns going full width. And then on this paragraph wrap here, we might wanna add just a regular U column, that way we can set our own custom sort of column span for this. So we might have this start maybe on the fifth column, like so, so it pushes it over. And we can set it to span all of the remaining columns. So we'll just do negative one. And there it's filling up that space. So that means if we take this whole parent subgrid, we could change this to be an eight column grid. We could change it to start maybe on the third column. And all the children inside will respect that because they're just filling the available space within the subgrid. So let's change that back to two and span 10. So that's looking good. And on the next breakpoint here, we might set this to start on the first column and either span 12 or we can just say negative one. So it fills all the remaining. And that means that we've converted this child grid to be a 12 column grid now, just like its parent, because it's all based on the column count of the parent. So this is starting on the fifth column out of 12 now, and that will continue down here. And then on this breakpoint, it's getting tight. So let's make it start on the first column and it'll just span all 12 of the remaining columns.